tells him how much he spent. And that's how he signed me. Uh, he signed players on blank. I actually signed a blank contract when I joined Nottingham Forest. I must have been mad. And he took me out for a meal. He had given me a few glasses of wine. I went back down the office and just signed without anything on it. So, but fortunately, he actually paid up what we agreed. Uh, but at Forest, I mean, it, if they finish in the top six, uh, win like the Littlewoods Cup or the Rumblows Cup is what it's called now, uh, although it, perhaps not even do that, but get to an FA Cup semi-final, which they've been quite successful in the last four years. Uh, they'd be, the Forest fans would be happy with that, because 20,000 people is not really a lot of pressure. And the difference to come to United is obviously far greater. There's like 40,000 every week. There's a lot more pressure here to win something every season. But Alec Ferguson, from the outside, can seem to be a fairly fearsome character as well, when, when riled at it. Well, I, I've... Well, Brian, he's told me that he's mellowed since, uh, since I've been here. I mean, I've been here two years. I mean, I haven't... Well, I missed my first season anyway, the majority of it, so I haven't seen the, the teacups, if you, you know, go flying across the, across the room. But uh, he has got one of these fiery Scotch tempers like, like most of them have. <laughs> but, I mean, I haven't ever seen it. I mean, he's, he's definitely mellowed with me. Do you, do you agree with that, Brian? We ran out of cups. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he factored in the one day Coventry when the boss wasn't happy about the first half performance at all and he come in at half time and the f before he'd even say anything the whole teacups everything went off the table all over everybody's blazer and flannels right and since then he never really went for the cups so much because so, he just drowned everybody's clothes um, but I think because the boss has got used to the club now and he, he's quite happy with the squad that he's got um, that the pressure's come off him a wee bit now and he's definitely more relaxed since halfway through last season than, than when he first come and um, but you know I think he's benefiting from that as well. You see him on the bench Steve, I mean does he seem an intense man? They, 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 they seem to be almost like a chorus line the Manchester United quartet on the bench going up to the linesman back again in the news. <laughs> I, I, without patronising the man, I think when the job was available, I think he was the right man for the job. And I think now, uh, things probably that people won't realise, you know, the youth system that he's now instigating, which will only, the benefit will be seen in years to come. I think, he, you know, he's really got that going the way he had it in Aberdeen. He was famous in Scotland for the youth system at Aberdeen. You know, right, dominating the Highland <coughs> football, everything. So many good young kids. And I think now we're just seeing that at, at United. And Funny, you know, talking about Alex Ferguson, the comparisons with Matt, because I don't really know him as a football manager, Alex Ferguson, but Matt, when things weren't going well for you at half-time, he'd come in, and he'd, he never ever swore, Matt, never ever used bad language in his life, on or off the pitch, and, and he'd have that angelic look about him as if, you know, you felt that you were letting the man down to be losing. You know, he didn't, he didn't ever go at you there like that, he just f spoke to you about the game, and you thought, by God, imagine. What a lovely man and a great man, and we're getting beat, how dare we lose? And that was the way he done it. Totally the opposite. I'm sure the Manchester United fans who loved you so much as a player want me to ask you in light of what Brian said as to whether as a manager you've ever thrown any cups at uh, half-time. <laughs> no, I haven't actually. Like I always think, like I've thrown a sandwich once. <laughs> it's stuck on the roof. But... No, no, I'll leave it at cups. A few of the players are bigger than me, you see, so I've got to watch out, I can't get the clothes dirty. Uh, yeah, you know, you've got to see the giants. Everybody's right. bigger than you. <laughs> I've got to watch out, because a few of them might move next door, and I can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> the name of Manchester United and its many past glories is known and respected and loved right around the world. The club is steeped in history. But what does it mean to the men who shaped that history? When I go home back down south now, I mean, I live about 300 miles away, but when I go back home, everyone knows Manchester United. I mean, when I was at Nottingham Forest, it was, oh, you play for Forest, but now everyone, like little kids come running down the street in the United strips, and that's just tremendous. And uh, like I say, it's, it's just a great privilege to play for them. The thing that I've enjoyed about Manchester is that uh, even though it's a high-pressure club, you can live in the Manchester area and you can live without too much hassle away from the game. People let you get on with your lives, with your family, and that's the part that I've really enjoyed as well as the football. Manchester United to me is just a warm feeling. I think from, from when I was playing, it gave me so much from a material point of view. Uh, from a memory point of view, I've got a, a fun fall which will last me a lifetime. And uh, I, whenever it's mentioned, the score on television, anything, I just, 
you know, I just feel good about like the name and hearing it, and it, it seems right. And like Paddy's got a tie on there, which is, I believe, is a society of X Men United All players. Players. You're and, one of them, like, aren't you? No, I've got one of them. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a member of the society, and yeah. I'm proud to be it. And I think anybody who has been connected with the club is proud to have been associated with the place. Nice place to live in. Great people. Very, very friendly people. Lovely to talk to. Football's their life. I mean, this is a football mad city, not just for United, but for City as well. Football mad city is. Steve, a warm feeling that gives you every time you even look at the place or anything like that. And I remember George on television not very long ago, and somebody was asking him about football in general, and George says, well, he says, I'm a Manchester United supporter. Says it all. 